Hello everyone and welcome to this video overview of our fourth evidence based instructional practice where we are looking at discussion. My name is Misty Higgins and I'm joined by Carrie McDaniel and we are professional learning coordinators in the Division of Program Standards in the Office of Teaching and Learning at the Kentucky Department of Education. And this year we are uh, focusing our work around two essential questions. The first, what evidence based instructional practices best support Kentucky educators in designing classroom instruction that is aligned to the Kentucky academic standards? And then second, how can teachers effectively implement these practices to help students meet the expectations within the CAS? And we are currently in year three of our three year implementation plan, and that is focused on evidence based instructional practices. So we're really looking at the importance of designing classroom instruction that utilizes evidence based practices that are necessary for students to reach the grade level expectations within the CAS. So why a focus on evidence based instructional practices? Well, first and foremost, because all students deserve access to quality standards aligned grade level instruction. And we know from the research that the quality of the day to day instruction that students receive can have a significant impact on their overall achievement. So by intentionally and strategically selecting and utilizing evidence based instructional practices, teachers can help ensure that students are working towards reaching the intended learning outcomes. We will be releasing a total of six EBIT modules. There were three that we released in the fall of 2021 and three will be released in the spring of 2022. And here you can see the release dates for each individual EBIT. While there are numerous evidence based instructional practices that we could have chosen, these six were strategically selected because they support students in reaching the intended learning outcomes across all content areas and within the CAS. And then for each professional learning module, we will be releasing a video overview, facilitation considerations for structuring professional learning at the local level, a general overview that defines evidence based instructional practices and why they are critically important for student success, an introduction on the released EBIT that really synthesizes the current research on that practice, and then finally, content specific resources to support classroom implementation. So now let's take a look at the fourth evidence based instructional practice, which focuses on discussion. There are six key areas addressed for this practice with the seventh section containing links to discussion protocols. The introduction provides a quick overview of the importance of using discussion to support students in reaching the grade level expectations within the CAS. The second and third sections examine what the brain research says about discussion and why it is important, while laying out the steps teachers should take to explicitly teach in-depth discussion skills. The next two sections take a closer look at how teachers can deepen student understanding of content through intentionally planning for discussion using equitable protocols and questioning STEM considerations. Section six takes a closer look at some targeted strategies to support the formative assessment process. And finally, as I mentioned before, that last section contains links to discussion protocols commonly used in education to elicit discussion before, during, and after instruction. In addition to the narrative portion that summarizes the current research on discussion, we have also included content specific resources focused on the following three areas of support. So connections between the practice of discussion and the CAS for that content area, planning considerations for implementing this practice in each content area to ensure equitable access and opportunity for all students to learn the standards within the CAS, and finally, strategies and resources to support educators in implementing this practice in their classroom to support students meeting the intended learning outcomes within the CAS for that content area. Thank you for watching this overview of our fourth evidence based instructional practice. As always, if you have questions, feel free to reach out to either me or Misty. Thank you for joining us.